on one hand we have all the factors that we can count as you know stressors and these stressors expose us to chronic and extreme form of stress neurological stress psychological and emotional stress that shows up physically as well how let's talk about that later so growing up in chaotic punitive aggressive environment is a big stressor that is what we uh, have experienced unconscious and dysregulated parenting now if your one parent was a narcissist but the other was not but they were unconscious of what they were doing given how it was traumatic for them as well and how dysregulated they were as well it also becomes a factor of stress for us even though so for some of us it becomes a way to escape the trauma a factor of relief but still it is a stressor instability unpredictability haven't we all lived this hypervigilance poverty is something different but it again is a huge stressor bullying unfortunately we as survivors of narcissistic parents most of us i don't know why but we get to experience this as well from other children who lie more on the spectrum of uh, narcissism and narcissistic personality and then we become victims in different environments overburdening parentification where we have to take care of our parent by becoming their therapist their advisor or we have to play any role that pushes us to grow before time abandonment neglect or abuse of any kind sexual abuse let's say that comes from maybe your parent or someone else so all of this in combination creates developmental gaps and that developmental gap manifests as one formation and activation of protective mechanisms aggression anger being overly angry getting easily irritated or having anger as our primary way to defend ourselves defiance shutting down codependent patterns avoidant patterns insecure attachment self sacrificing anything that you can imagine of every pattern that you have within yourself is an adaptive mechanism and today you will understand that you are not disordered while you may think you are because labeling ourselves as this that and the other may define why we are the way we are but we need to go deeper we need to really understand that what we call as our weakness is our power because you have to people please you have to adapt in a way you have to become a certain way for you to survive that environment let's say that you are sent to a war not in the present times but let's say we were born in before 80s when they used to fight with swords and shields and heavy stuff now if you go to the war would you just go you know with a bare body wearing nothing for the protection no shields of course not you will wear that armor would it be heavy 100% would it weigh you down yes would you slow you down yes would you feel trapped in it indeed but would it protect you yes it would now if today i see you wearing that armor and say hey you are disordered there's a problem with you with your armor because you are wearing this armor and it makes you look different would it be justified absolutely not it is the adaptation of yours now playing a role in your life and that is how you have developed that is how you have programmed in this moment and that shield is your power not your weakness it's not a disorder it's a brain's way of protecting you is there a requirement and necessity of just putting it down now can the shield be put down yes and that is what we are going to learn today essentially if we were to look at it through nervous system how our nervous system functions then all of your responses fall into these four categories fight flight freeze or fawn people pleasing what are you doing you're fawning take this do not abandon me fight there is aggression everything that triggers you you know i'm giving you very over example there could be different over examples of that as well but let's say there is aggression that is fight flight avoid an attachment the moment things start to get intense with someone you perceive a threat because attachment itself has been the source of the biggest trauma biggest betrayal so how would you give in and become vulnerable what is your response run away flight freeze if someone is dominant and narcissistic like your parent was and controls you through fear you do not know why you can't leave or you do not find the clarity that you need to take the decision it could be with your parent as well even though you have the capacity but you still feel that they have a grip over you 
what is that that is a freeze response so all of these different manifestations are different ways of coping wouldn't you say well is a narcissism then an adaptation shouldn't we extend our grace to them as well and that got me thinking while i was writing all of this stuff i need to cover it here right now no matter what you are no matter what you have been through as you're listening to me no matter what other people have done to you as far as you have this capacity to reflect no matter how much you're bleeding and take responsibility for your own actions and make a choice even if you are hurting but you still make a choice every single day the not to hurt others because you know what it means to get hurt the way you could possibly hurt them where does it come from it comes from your choice you are not intentionally going out there presenting to be some thing that someone is lacking and then just to get them into the trap and once they are in and you change that is not trauma genic that is predatory they may have their wounds but you need to understand that they make their choices to never take responsibility they could have done that they are calculated how could they lie when they want to and choose not to when they do not want to given what the purpose is given what they want out of the situation so in a nutshell they had the choice and they have it but they are not willing to practice it they're not willing to address their own shit which is why even if there is trauma they have chosen to separate from it and always project their flaws on others and see others as problems and never themselves and that is how they are different from what we are talking about how it is not just an adaptation it's a choice it's beyond that So moving forward from there there are behavioral and emotional disruptions and this is what is most important for us there is developmental of alter templates i think i touched it earlier that given by giving you the example of if you were abandoned if you had to run after the parent to get love if you had to self sacrifice if you had to do whatever you could that is what you learned about love that is what the template neural pathway was created in your head that this is the way i had to be this is the way i could possibly get the love that i want this is how i would feel the connection this is how i will be seen this is how i will be taken care of and those altered templates that you developed earlier are now manifested through relational emotional and cognitive physical patterns meaning how you relate with others what your relationships look like how you feel emotionally about others and about yourself what do you believe about others what do you believe about the world what do you believe about yourself and how do you feel physically suppression leads to disconnection the root of all of this is unsafety every pattern and its development came from unsafety because we felt unsafe in the environment then we had to adapt and out of that adaptation this pattern took its birth that is the whole story that is the crux of it. impact simple very straightforward for you to understand the story of your life and of those who have been through this trauma trauma disconnects us trauma fragments us within ourselves all that is left is different adaptive mechanisms self sacrifice i'm just naming it again people pleasing aggression suppressing numbing out the emotions avoiding relationships or attaching too much wanting a savior to come and save you in the form of the partner everything happens because we are fragmented in our psyche and these different parts play different roles because if you have a voice within yourself that always puts you down and you feel shame of that and then you try more means you have an inner critic you may have heard of it what is that that is a disconnection we disconnect connect from ourselves our true authentic self that is valuable that needs not to be shamed that needs not to be put down or to function properly and to get things done but because we dissociate and create these different parts the aggressor the part that is afraid the part that you know drives us to take high risks that the part that plays a role in pushing us to be a perfectionist this is all dissociation this is splitting that happens within our psyche because of the treatment of a narcissistic parent and your pure self if i had asked you who are you maybe i don't know most of you would say i don't know who i am because we do not know ourselves as from a survivors we do not know who we are so the self is your true value that's why you do not feel enough the fact that you are enough as you are and you do not feel that way is because of this fragmentation and disconnection from our own true value and that is why the healing journey is not about becoming someone else becoming the best version of yourself it is becoming who you are bringing all of these parts together into a whole integrating them into your system as one and returning home connecting with that self 
connecting with that worth that is innately possessed by you connecting with that enoughness releasing that shame dissolving that fear because that is not yours to carry you had to carry that as an adaptation that is the whole journey all about